You are the praise chief. Oh, come on. 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 What do we come to do this morning? What do we come to do this morning? What do we come to do this morning? I don't know about you, but I came to praise my God. Oh, where the praise is at in the room? Where's the praise is at in the room? I don't know about you, but I came to praise my God. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. I can't sing another song until we get with the praise. Until we feel this atmosphere with the praises to our God. Until we feel this atmosphere with the praises to our King. Praise the Lord, everybody. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, magnify. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name. 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 Listen. We want to God to fill this room this morning. We want to God to fill this room this morning. Is y'all ready to praise with God? Let me see your hand. Y'all ready? One, two, one, two, three, everybody. Oh, I don't see y'all moving this morning. Yes, Lord. Everybody move, yeah. Yes, Jesus. Let's go. There is a sound. Down from heaven that changes everything. I am free, no fear is holding me, nothing can stop my praise. Oh, 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 oh we were made for freedom. Jesus has redeemed us, my friend. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 oh singing out together. Freedom reigns forever. So let's feed up a field of
you lift him, he'll come in. If you praise him, he'll come in. He inhabits the praises of his people. So I dare you to praise him. I dare you to praise him. I dare you to praise him. He's in this room. He's in the 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 room. And when Jesus steps in, freedom has to live here. When Jesus steps in, healing has to live here. When Jesus steps in, breakthrough has to live here. So make way for the king. Make way for the king. Make way for the king. He's in the room. Oh, is that how you act if you knew he was in the room? Would that be your praise if you knew that he was in the room? Would that be your answer if you knew that he was in the room? He's getting ready to shift your life. He's getting ready to shift that problem. What the devil meant for evil. God is getting ready to turn it around. God's getting ready to turn it around. For your good. And for his glory. For your good. And for his glory. For your good. And for his glory. He's getting ready to do it. He's getting ready to do it. He's getting ready to do it. My God, he's getting ready to do it. Who's the point where you believe? Listen, we serve a God who can do a lot of things. We serve a God with a lot of names. So is it all right we call some of those names this morning? Yes, Jesus, we believe in you, God. Who's in heaven right there? Y'all got it. Let me see your hands clap right there. Your name is holy, you are so holy to me. I call you holy, your name is holy, holy you are and holy.
are you holy? Your name is holy. You are so holy to me. I call you holy. I call you holy. Your name is holy. Somebody lift him. Call him what you call him. If he's your deliverer, call him deliverer. If he's your waymaker, call him waymaker. If he's your sustainer, call him your sustainer. Somebody ought to call on Jesus. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's give God glory. Come on, let's give God praise. Hallelujah, the Spirit of God is in the room. Come on and give God glory. Hallelujah, come on and give God praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. I don't know what you came to do today, but I came to give God glory. I, I came to give God praise. I, I came to tell him hallelujah. I came to tell him thank you, Jesus. I, I came to tell him thank you for being a way maker. Thank you for being a heart regulator. Thank you for being a mind fixer. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. You're worthy, God. Give him glory. He's worthy, God. He's worthy of all the glory. He's worthy of all the... I serve an amazing God. I serve an amazing God. My God does amazing things. He woke me up this morning. He's simply amazing. He's simply amazing. Hallelujah. He kept me on the highway. He's simply amazing. He didn't let me lose my mind. He's simply amazing. He didn't let me die in my sin. He is simply amazing. Come on, put your hands together and tell God, thank you. You're worthy, God. Thank you. I love you, God. Thank you. Hallelujah, God. Oh, glory to your name, God. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah, God. He's a worthy God, amen. He's a worthy God. He's a worthy God. I'm up here to give the welcome, hallelujah. But we ought to already feel welcome, amen. Hallelujah. When you walk in the door, you need to feel welcome in the presence of the Lord, amen. God is a good God. God is an awesome God. He is simply amazing. He is simply amazing. And we are grateful, amen. So we greet you today, New Zion Baptist Church, on behalf of Pastor Colby Cotton and Lady Cotton, on behalf of Pastor Rick, on behalf of our church family. Do we have any first time visitors here today? We're not going to make you say nothing. Come on, stand up just so we can see you and we'll be able to greet you. Come on, give them a new Zion welcome. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. 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 Thank God. We thank God for you. We thank you for being here with us today. You're in the right place. You're in the right place at the right time with the right people. Amen. So on behalf of New Zion Baptist Church, we welcome you. We thank God for you. To our online visitors, we thank God for you. And our online worshipers, we thank God for you. We thank you for being with us today. And we just want you to know that here at New Zion, you're never alone. You are never alone. We are here for you. If we don't have what you need, we know how to connect you with what you need to the resources that you need. So trust God on today. Believe God for a breakthrough in your life. Expect to hear from heaven. So whatever you came with, leave it here. Know that God answers prayers. Amen. Come on, New Zion. Let's welcome each other. Hallelujah. Let's welcome each other as Pastor Cotton comes. Come on, y'all. Y'all know how we do it every Sunday. Come on, get on your feet and love on somebody next to you. Let them know that I love you with the love of God. Come on, let's go love on our guests.
Blessing my coming in. That means when I walk out the door, I'm blessed. When I come home, I'm bringing something home with me that's blessed. Everything I do is blessed. Everything I touch is blessed. Everything I think is blessed. How many of you love that kind of blessing? No matter what I do, I can't stop being blessed. My blessings are overflowing. That's the way God works. So this morning, we want our blessings to overflow. And there's a formula to doing that. The Bible says in Luke 6, 38, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet, with it shall be measured to you again. In other words, that same heart that you give, that same love that you give, that same amount that you give, God is saying, I'm going to give you more time. I'm going to exponentially increase that to a point to where you can't help but it just overflows. You ever try to pour water in a cup? 
and you pour it to the very top and you keep trying to pour something in that cup and it just overflows and it gets on the counter and it gets on the sink and it gets on the floor and it gets on the couch. Well, that's the same way God operates. When God is pouring blessings into you for being obedient, for loving him, for doing what you're supposed to be doing, God's just going to overflow you so much that everybody connected to you can't help but get it on them too. So it's going to get on your children, on your family, on your parents, on your brothers, on your sisters, on your friends, on your people on your job and everybody that's connected to you is blessed and saturated in that same flow of blessings. Amen. So this one, I, I just want to say something real quick and I'll be real quick. So when we talk about the number 40, everybody say 40. 40. There's some significant things about it. We're talking about a divine journey, a, a testing period. When we talk about 40, we're talking about transformation. We're talking about breakthroughs. Just as Moses spent 40 days communing with God, just when he was on the holy mountain, just as Jesus fasted for 40 days in the wilderness, preparing for his ministry, 40 signifies preparation and transformation. Some of you have been in the wilderness for a long time. Some of you have been struggling for a very long time, wondering, how do I make so much money, but I'm still always broke? How can I not get a job when I've applied over and over and over and over again? How, when I feel like I'm doing the right things health-wise, my health just won't get better? I'm trying to eat right now. Why is it when I go to church, every time I go to church, it feels like I'm not having breakthroughs, but everybody else around me doing what they want to do is getting breakthroughs left and right. I'm in this wilderness place. Well, there's a formula for getting out the wilderness. Number one is obedience to God. The Bible says that obedience is better than sacrifice. So obedience. God. The other thing of getting out of the wilderness is giving. What? That don't sound logical, preacher. You're saying that I can get more by giving? Yes. That's the way God operates because God doesn't operate on logic. So for some of us right now, we have been in this wilderness and we need a 40 out of this wilderness blessing. We need a 40 day on the high mountain collaboration with God blessing. We need a breakthrough blessing. So they, as we come in this offer, what I want to do is I want you to consider sowing $40 seed. Y'all know we are not prosperity money preaching. We're not flying in here in helicopters. We're not living in diamond houses. But what we do, do we have the, some of the things that we do? That, the slide? What we do here is ministry at this church. We do feed homeless. We do go to unhoused shelters. We do give food in the food pantries. We do minister to others. We do have programs to help people with mental health, with psychological issues. We, we do help the community. We do sponsor tutoring. We do, we do so many things in these church. And that's part of expanding God's ministry. No, not that one. The things that we do. The things that we do. I want you to show it. Um, so as we come today, for those of you that are needing a divine miracle, there we go that are needing a breakthrough, I, I wanted them to show, so y'all can see for yourselves the type of stuff that we do here at this church. What we're trying to do is really take this church, this community, to the next level. We want to stretch our hands. We want to stretch our arms. We want to stretch our reach and bless so many more people. And y'all can see that we are rapidly expanding growth. Three months ago, you probably could have fit everybody in these three seats. But now we have to utilize every chair that we have in this building. We're growing rapidly. It's happening out of the seams. And so we have to expand. We have to do more. We have to do renovations. We have to do all kinds of things. And we also have to continue to outreach. It's the outreach that's doing this, the ministering, it's the helping of people. And God is increasing. He's overflowing us. So I'm asking everybody this morning, to give a $40 seed or as close as you can give to it and watch breakthroughs happen. Watch the transformation happen in your life. We're talking about you in your specific life. Watch the healing happen in your life. Watch the job promotion come that you've been asking for for so long come in your life. Watch the health breakthrough, the report from the doctor come in your life. Watch your family come back together in your life. Watch your marriage healed in your life. This is what we're asking you to give to this morning because God, he really does honor obedience and trust. 
He doesn't need your money. Let's not get it twisted. God owns everything. Our God is rich. He owns all the houses, all the land, anything you can think of, God owns it. So all he's saying is, I want to see how much you trust me. And I'm going to bless you based on your trust. I'm going to bless you based on your faith. And if you can give like you really trust me, watch me. Just, I'm going to make your basket overflow. You're going to have so many fish in your net that the net's going to break. How many of y'all want some broken nets right now? <laughs> How many of y'all need some broken necks right now? Y'all need some broken nets right now? Well, I, I, I want you to stand up with me. And we're going to say the tithing declaration as you give your 40 or as close as you can to it. If you're writing a check, write it to First Baptist. Uh, we just had the new name change and everything's been approved by the Secretary of the State for the new name. And so while everything's being changed over with Count Wise, go write it to First Baptist for now. But I want us to say our tithing declaration. We say it because our words are what? And every seed, every word you speak is a seed that's planted in the spirit realm and it does manifest itself in the natural. Um, if you're giving with your phone, you can hold your phone up in the air, but I want you just to hold your seed up in the air, whether it's the cash in your hand or the phone, if you're at home, hold your keyboard up, whatever it is. But, because we want God to bless this seed and honor what he said he's going to do this morning. We're praying this morning for breakthroughs. We're praying this morning that you will not be broke again. We're praying this morning that your bank accounts will be filled. We're praying this morning that healing will take place in your body before you even walk out that door. We're praying this morning that this seed of faith that we're planting will bring your family back together. We're praying that this seed of faith this morning will heal your marriage. We're praying that this seed of faith right now will give us breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough and everybody that's connected to us will get breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough and everybody that's connected to them. We are praying that this seed makes us world changers. Amen. So let's say this together. Because I obey God with my tithes and offerings, the Lord blesses everything I put my hand to. The blessings of God are chasing me, and I am committed to do my part as a believer to support my church, expand the gospel, help those in need, and sow seeds that will bless generations to come. Amen. Watch God do it. I want to hear some testimonies next week. Here we go. So what we're going to do, we're going to start from the back on the outside rows, and you're going to make your way around. After the outside rows have finished starting from the back, then we'll have the middle rows coming starting from the back and make your way around. Amen? All right. Here we go. And if you're giving online, you can cash app NBC, FBNBC, $40. I mean, dollar sign, FBNBC, or text 77977, FBNBC.
praise God right there. Hallelujah. Somebody praise God right there. Listen, we serve an everlasting God. Does anybody believe that this morning? He reigns forever. He lives forever. He is still alive to this day. Lord, we thank you for being everlasting. And we thank you for reigning forever. And we bless your name, O oh Lord Jesus. We got a mind standing where we worship for the word. With hands lifted all over the building. I need to just take this moment to just speak sweet words to your father. Whether it's God, I love you. Lord, I love you. We bless you. And I give you honor. I give you praise. So the Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid of? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid of? And I will wait on you. I will wait on you. On you. And I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Anybody waiting on God this morning? So I will wait on I you. I will wait on you. And while I'm waiting, I will trust in I you. I will trust in you. So I will trust in I you. I will trust in you. Yeah. So we say, I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord say I will remain I will be confident in it I will see the goodness of the Lord say the Lord is my Lord, Lord is my light and salvation so whom shall I fear who shall I fear who shall I be afraid I'm 
our hope on your love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting. Said you are, you are the everlasting God. Said you are. always wins he is our great defender he is our strong tower and he never loses a battle I don't care what you're going through I don't care what it looks like in this temporary moment set your things on things eternal set your hope on things eternal set your faith on things eternal not the things that you see right in front of you but the things that's coming before you the things you'll see in heaven this is only temporary this space that we occupy is only temporary. It's Jesus. He is my full, full, Father, calling me out of the dark. Lights cannot whisper away what you said in the light. And He is my firm foundation. My ankle won't be moved. The storms may collide, but my soul is on fire with this word. So when I listen to the sound, when I listen to the sound, a power on my lips, power on my lips. Jesus has broken the curse. Jesus has broken the curse. He has never lost. He has Battle. battle so who are you, who are you that you should not bow low you should not bow low Jesus defeated, Jesus defeated the dark. he has never lost, he has never lost. A, battle. a battle and he never will he never will and he never will he never will that's my promise to you he never will he never will, he never will. He never will, he never will. And he never will, he never will. He never will, he never will. So he is my faith for Father's sake. Calling me out of the dark. Nights cannot, cannot whisper away what he said in the light. So he is my faith.
face and he never will. No matter what you see, he never will. Remain confident that God is faithful. Remain confident that God is able. He never will, he never will. He never will, he never will. Our great defender, our strong tower, he has never lost a battle. He has never lost a battle. So
just wait on them. So they that wait, that wait on the Lord, on the Lord shall renew. Knew they should, knew they should. They shall mount, they shall mount a bone wing, a bone wing like an eagle. Like and so, and so they shall walk. That's what happens when you wait. 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 Said you wait. You wait. You wait. I beseech you, brethren. If you just wait on the Lord, I promise He will answer. I promise He will answer. I promise He will answer. For the next 30 seconds, just begin to worship God in this place as we get ready to go into the Word. Just tell something to God. Either tell Him you love Him, tell Him I adore you, I need you, Lord, I thank you. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Worship him, worship him. Lord, you are king of Come on, worship him. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Worship. Let that speak to your spirit. He never will. We lift up your name, 
your worship he wants your worship he wants your worship he wants you to open up your mouth he wants you to tell him how much you love him how much you need him how much you want him how much you need him come on lord i can't make it without you lord i've been sick i can't make it without you lord my body won't get right lord i can't make it lord here i am Oh God, mend that broken heart in this atmosphere. Heal that marriage in this atmosphere. Touch the mind, God. Touch the mind, God. Touch the heart, God. Touch the heart, God, in the name of Jesus. Come on, worship him, worship him, worship him. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be? Praise is what I do when I want to be close to you. In spite of what I'm going through, I'll still lift my hands and tell him thank you. In, in spite of my afflictions, I'll tell the Lord thank you. In spite of what I've been through, I'll tell the Lord thank you because I, I owe God a praise. He sent his son to pay a debt that I could not pay. I owe God a praise. check that I didn't have the ability to cash. I owe God a praise. Mm. Because praise is what I do. And I my circumstance
good and the bad. I'll praise you. Whether happy, whether happy or sad, I'll praise you. In all. And I am Praise. your neighbor's hand. We're going to try this again. Just for a good 30 seconds, just begin to pray for that neighbor. Intercede for that neighbor. You don't know what they're going through. They may be trying to hold it all in because they don't want nobody to know that they're really going through something. Come on, intercede for that neighbor right there. Strength right now. Squeeze strength into that hand right there. I don't know who this is for, but you're going to live to see it happen. You're going to live to see it happen. You're going to see that healing come into place. You're going to see deliverance come into place. You're going to see breakthrough come into place. Now release that hand and give God a hand clap of praise. Come on, you ought to clap as if the devil is in between them. Praise is what I do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to do a lot of reading today, I'm, so I'm going to ask you to take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Jesus, the book of Ezra. To our first time guests, it's so good to see you. God bless you. You could have picked anywhere else to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning, and you picked New Zion, and I'm grateful. 
Ezra chapter 3 and media. I'm going to need your help this morning because we're going we're gonna to jump through some scriptures. Ezra chapter 3, starting at verse 10. You don't have to stand. You don't have to stand because we're going to do some reading today. Don't act like it's Bible study. Because I believe that even on Wednesday nights, we have a little bit of church. Amen. All my Bible study folk, y'all make some noise. So I have to make sure y'all was in the house. Amen. The Bible reads, it says, and when, matter of fact, let's read it together. Read. When the builders laid the foundation of the temple, they set the priests in peril with trumpets, and the Levites and the son of Asher. Uh huh. Next verse. Hold up. Uh huh. Wait, next verse. Read. Next verse. Funny how they, 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 they started with good church. And then the Bible says that it was noise. There's a difference from, from, from noise. Hallelujah. It's, it's, it's a big difference when you're making noise uh, and when you're really living for God. Turn, turn, turn to hate to Hagar. Haggai, excuse me. Chapter one. Amen. Y'all ready to work? Nah, hold on, y'all. Y'all ready to work? All right. All right. Uh, we're gonna start at verse two. It says. Uh, Thus speak the Lord of hosts, saying, this people say, somebody say this people. The time has not come, the time that our Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord from Haggai, the prophet, saying, it is time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses. Uh, and, and this house lie waste. Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Jump down to verse 13. I'm trying to fix this hum. I can't do it this way. Then spake who? Uh, the Lord's who? In the... In the, the Lord's message unto the people, saying, I am with you, saith the Lord. Just, just for a little bit, I want to talk on the, on the fault. Uh, it was all hype. <laughs> Deacon Bratton, isn't it, man? It, it, was, it, was, it was all hype. Hallelujah. Y'all praying with me? Just having good church ain't going to cut it when you have been called and tasked to carry out the will of God. 
As much as I love good church, as much as I love a good praise break, as much as I love a good worship moment, as much as I love seeing people run around the church, all that stuff is good. Uh, as much as I love saying, uh, grab your neighbor by the hand, and is there anybody here? Ain't the Lord all right, and won't God do it? And we go home and say, oh, Pastor Show did preach. We had some good church. But as much as I love having good church, if we call that good church, then I, I hate to say this, my brothers and sisters, but we are headed in the wrong direction. Uh, well, uh, well, why do you say that? Uh, the mindset of good church, watch this, can be based on many different things. Hallelujah. Uh, see, some of us think that good church is when the choir sings good, right? Hallelujah. Some of us think good church is when the preacher uh, sweated out his clothes and all that good stuff, and he was laying hands on everybody. Some of us think that that's good church when the music sounds good. Or, uh, 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 but, but then what happens when the music doesn't sound good? What happens when the word just, just doesn't work for you on that particular Sunday? Uh, we have the mindset that uh, church was all right. The choir didn't sing your song, so church was all right. Sister so-and-so didn't speak to you, so church, hallelujah, uh, church was all right. But there's, there's a danger when we base those kind of opinions and call it good church. Because God has called us to be the church. <laughs> but the church ain't based on how good the choir sang. <laughs> uh, the, 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 uh, the church ain't based on whether you like what sister so-and-so had on. Oh, hallelujah. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, the, the church is based on what Jesus established upon this what? Rock, I'll build my and the gates of hell shall what? Not uh, prevail against it, right? Uh, but it also, it, it's also really founded on repentance. Oh, y'all quiet this morning. If you really want to be a part of the church, it comes with a repented heart. Because good church is connected to repentance. Oh, my God. Hey, good, uh, see, see, good, see, good church... Uh, Real good church is when I can just take a moment and just think about the goodness of the Lord. That's good church. Uh, I could be at Walmart and have, hallelujah. Uh, I could be at Ross and have good church. My, I could be at Texas State at Gary Job Corps. I could be uh, at the outlet mall shopping. And I, and I just, just, just think of the fact that I'm able to swipe my debit card and there's money in my bank account. Uh, that To me, that's good church because I know that there's been times in my life when I haven't been able to do I had to check my bank account to see if I had the funds there. Uh, there was times in my wish I had somebody in here. Uh, there was times in my life when I had to make sure that my check hit the bank account but when I just think that all I can do is just really think uh, and that's when I begin to think uh, because that's good church to me I could care less about an organ I could care less about the drums uh, I could care less who is here when I think of the goodness of Jesus look, look at somebody and say that's good church However, my brothers and sisters, I do believe that we have fallen victim to the hype of good church, claiming to have something, but our lifestyles are reflecting something totally different. Uh, lifestyle, I ain't talking about folks here, I'm just talking about in general, first lady. Uh, uh, lifestyles, their hearts reflect something else. So in other words, if it ain't about you, all of a sudden, you stop showing up to church. Huh. And the preacher, he every time he preach about sin, I'm sick of hearing sin. And I don't want to go to that church because he tells me that I got to live right. And so I ain't going to go. Uh, as soon as it's no longer about them and there's no benefit to them. They stop being the church, which, watch this, which shows a lack of godliness. Mm, it shows a lack of commitment to the continuation of working on your temple. Because we all are a temple. And it's crucial that you make sure your temple 
is in order. It's crucial that you take care of your temple. Uh, but sometimes life just begins to happen and we end up leaving our temple in ruins. Ah, first Corinthians. Help me, media. First, first, first Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Mm, thank you, Jesus. We good? All right. It says, and if Christ be not raised, no faith. No, that ain't the verse. 16. 16 first. Sorry. I looked at my notes. I said, hold up. Wait a minute. First, is that first Corinthians? Chapter 3. Somebody said so many chapters. Hallelujah. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. Let's read it. It says, know ye not that ye are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwelleth in who? In who? In who? Okay. Uh, next, next verse. If any man do what? Hallelujah. The temple of who? Him, sh him shall God what? For the temple of God is what? Which temple ye are. So if you defy your temple. <laughs> see, many reasons why people fight against change. It's not because they can't change. It's really due to the lack of holiness in their lives. Hallelujah. Uh, which is why there are people who are wishy-washy. Fake. Stuck up crowd all up in the church trying to run and control the church but uh, because it's a fight against their fleshly desire to submit to what God is really trying to do hmm. see holiness would challenge your thinking holiness will make you submit to God holiness will cause you to release control off of yourself and, and, and you'll find yourself literally doing things that you said you would never do for God. See, holiness will make you do that. But the flesh will make you do things that are very opposite of holiness. <laughs> my God, my God. Look at your name and say, you got to be holy. <laughs> and it's not a one-time decision. Carly, it's an it's a everyday decision decision to live for God you can't pick and choose even I'm can I talk to my young people real quick you can't pick and choose when you're going to live right for the Lord you can't pick and choose when you're going to fornicate not fornicate we good wanted to make sure because I, I came to really speak to your spirit man today because sometimes we get so caught up in the hype and the holler that we miss out what God is really trying to do in his word we can hoop and holler another day, but today I, I want us to dig today. It's very crucial that we get our lives in order. Yes. Hey, if we continue to put good church in the place of, watch this, of edifying our temple, then we will eventually neglect the responsibility of the church will result in complacency within the body. In other words, when we are so focused on having good church, and we don't, we leave here and we're still cussing and still lying and still stealing and still cheating and still doing all the things that we know we aren't supposed to do. Uh, all we're doing is just having good, good church. Well, am I helping somebody today? Uh, and there, there's a danger when we just have good church, deep. There, 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 there's a danger when we refuse to submit to God. Young people, there's a danger when we play and go back and forth on whom we will serve. Many folks can shout, but them same folks that are shouting will be the same folks that will cuss you out in a minute. And then it'll be them same folks that after they cussed you out the next day, they'll say, I heard from the Lord, and the Lord told me to tell you this. <laughs> you ain't heard from no Lord. <laughs> now, 
You heard from yourself. And because of this, many people are stuck in cycles. One season they're saved. Holly, who am I talking to somebody up in here? And am I the only one that's been there? Well, look, one season I was holy and all that good stuff, but then something happened, and then I slipped up and got caught up in that. Am I the only Can I keep it real? Am I the only one in here that's been there? I know we look good and we got our Sunday clothes on, but there was a time when, look, I would hit, I would hit that club and all that good stuff. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I keep it real? There was a time when I kept a little, a little thing next to my bed and I would roll up when I needed to and all that good stuff. There was a time. That's what's wrong. We don't want to be real in the church and then we expect change being fake. It don't work that way. We got to learn how to be. I got to be real with you, and you got to be real with me. Caught up in the hype. I can't stand somebody pumping up a party, and then I show up to the party, and I'm just like, man, you have the audacity to invite me to this thing, and, man, everybody's up on the walls. Anybody ever been to a party, and everybody's just, just holding up the walls, and the, mu the music just bumping, and just, uh, just holding up the walls? The flyer looked good. Everything, all the promotion was good, but you show up and it, man, what in the world did I just walk into? That's what happens when we just keep having good church. We just holding up the walls. Here in our text, I'm going to have to do a part two of this because I don't think we're going to get through with this one. He help me, Jesus. Somebody say, help us. Here in our text, we have the remnant of the people, uh, those that came back to Jerusalem after the Babylonian captivity. These are the people that didn't fall victim to idolatry. These are the people that stayed true to their commitment to God. These are the people that didn't give up. These are the people uh, that even though they were held captive, they, they stayed true to their faith. And the question I got to ask somebody, will you stay true to your faith when all hell is breaking loose? Matter of fact, will you stay true to your faith when, when, when you don't have a dime to your name? Will you stay true to your faith when your husband is beating you upside your head and you trying to figure out, Lord, you bless me with this man? And will, will, you, will you stay true to your faith when things don't go your way? Yeah, we need to understand that it was 70 years. Somebody shout 70. 70 years the children of Israel were in exile. Hell, captive. That's a long time. Hallelujah. Can you imagine? Oh, my God. Can I talk to my senior saints? Can you imagine going through something for 70 years uh, and you're trying to figure out when am I going to come out of this thing? When is depression going to leave my mind? Why am I still mourning the loss of this person? Why am I still mourning the loss of that person? Huh? How long do we have to stay in exile before we realize that it's time to come out of that thing? Oh, my God. Ain't nothing like being free when you've been bound. I can shout by myself right there. Because ain't, ain't, ain't nothing like feeling the love of God when you experience the wrath of God. Oh, my. Oh, oh. But, but we got to be careful because it's in these moments that we experience freedom and we experience love and we experience the puppy love of a good relationship. Hallelujah. I love you, baby. Uh, uh, it, it ain't nothing like experience all that good stuff, but, 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 but there's the, we got to be careful because we can get caught up in the hype of the thing and forget to continue to nourish that thing. Ah. They came and worked on the temple. They laid the foundation. And it's after the foundation was laid, the walls weren't up. But after the foundation was laid, the walls weren't up. After the foundation was laid, the walls weren't up. After the foundation was laid, the electricity wasn't turned on. After the foundation was laid, nobody called. The gas company said, we got to make sure we got gas and hot water. It was after the foundation was laid, they had good church. Well, let's look at what happens in the text. Go back to Ezra chapter Three, verse 11. And I'm going to skim through it. After they had good church, and all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord, 
because of the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. But then verse 12 says, but many of the priests and the Levites and the chief of the fathers who were ancient men, uh, they had seen the first house. In other words, uh, these, these are the senior saints. Uh, I ain't talking about this church. I'm talking about the text. Amen. Uh, uh, they had seen the first house. Anybody remember the first house? <laughs> Y'all going to catch that later. Uh, when the foundation of this house was laid before the eyes, they wept with a loud voice, and many shouted aloud for joy. In other words, the young folks were rejoicing while the older generation was weeping because of what was gone and what was now in their minds didn't reflect of what was then. But also they came into the reality that it was because of my neglect that caused the first temple to fall. missed it oh my god one group is rejoicing and another group is what weeping but due to the sound somebody shout the sound of it people couldn't discern the noise hey they 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 couldn't figure out if it was joy or if it was pain Oh, my brothers and my sisters, God sent me to speak to this house today. It is very crucial that we don't get caught up in the young folk versus the old folk. Oh, I can't get no help in here. Hallelujah. It's, 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 it's so crucial that we don't have that mindset because if we have that mindset, then I promise we're going to fall victim to complacency. Please, God, 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 God. Uh, God ain't looking for no noise. He's looking for a sound. He is looking for a joyful noise. And see, a joyful noise has nothing to do uh, uh, with, with uh, uh, really shouting or anything. It has, it has everything to do with what's really in your heart. Because mind you, the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's just really what you're saying is the fact that I'm saved, I can be joyful. Even though I don't have a dime, even though I'm broke, even though I'm sick, even though I'm busted, even though I don't look the best, even though I don't feel the best, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Even though I got to go to school every day, I got to go to my classes every day, I got to deal with my ignorant... Sorry. Sorry, I thought I was at home talking to my daughter. Hallelujah. Somebody shout noise. God ain't looking for no noise. He's looking for what, what, what? Matter of fact, can I ask you a question? What is the posture of your heart? Because the posture of your heart will reflect your sound. Ah, that's why praise and worship leaders get so frustrated during praise and worship because they're trying to push and they're trying to get the people to experience the posture of their heart. But because a lot of our hearts are in the right posture, we miss out on the moment when it's time to participate in praise and worship. <laughs> Even at a football game, they have cheerleaders saying, come on, clap your hands, defense, defense. And you know they need to play some defense because they're losing, but you'll still be busy having good church, watching the game, failing to participate in the game to tell the folks that are on the field, defense, I, 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 you need some defense. A sound that is linked to right to the righteousness of God will open up unexpected resources. A sound linked to the will of God will cause your walls to fall down. A sound that is linked to the love of God will cause your marriage to be restored. A sound that is linked to the power of God will cause blinded eyes to be opened. A sound that is linked to the sovereignty of God will cause healing to take place. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, what is your sound? The sound must be caught up. And if it had not been for the Lord, who was on my side for the young folk? And the sound got to be caught up. And if it had not been for the Lord, who was on my side for the old folk? In other words, we got to learn how to, uh, we got to learn how to sing the same song. Hallelujah. Uh, I, I, can, can I just get a young person and an older person just shout hallelujah? 
that's, that's when we are unified, when we do it together. It doesn't matter if you're in the key of A flat, E flat, C, whatever. It really doesn't matter. When we are touching and agreeing on the same thing and we're doing the same thing together, hand in hand, we can change this community. You can't be playing one chord and Joseph playing another chord. No, we got to be in sync. I'm in the text. They came together to build the temple. They laid the foundation. But some folk was reminiscing on what was then. Let it go. Because what God is trying to do is beyond what we have ever been. Uh, uh, we've got to watch, but then we got to be very careful because when we get caught up in the hype, let's look what happens in the text. He. The Bible says, I'm, I'm still in Ezra. We're going to go to chapter 4. The Bible says that when the enemies of Judah, somebody shout the enemies. The enemies of Judah heard that they were building the temple, they showed up. Mind you, they heard because they heard some noise. They, they didn't hear huh, that folks were getting saved. They heard some noise. They, they didn't hear that, 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 that we was feeding the homeless on Fridays. Can I just talk to our house for a little bit? They didn't hear that, that, that we were helping those that didn't have clothes and that we was helping those uh, that needed help with their utilities. They, they, all they heard was some noise, and the enemy showed up and said, hey, I, 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 I'm here to help you. Uh, it was the noise that brought forth their enemies. I'm in the text. It's in verse, verse 2, chapter 4 of Ezra. It said, hi, Eddie, what did it say? It said, let us build. With you, for we seek your God. It's, it's funny how they didn't say, <laughs> You got to pay attention when folks try to come up to you and tell me, Hey, I come to help you. <laughs> pay attention to exactly how they presented it. <laughs> he, for we seek your God as you do. They want us to become partners in building the work. Yet they were still adversaries. They wanted to partner in the work either to ruin it or to influence, influence it to their benefit. I have a problem when I know someone is my enemy, but now you want to partner with me to help me build the church. Which is why the Bible says, know them that labor. Hallelujah. Everyone who showed up when it's time to work ain't there. They sound convincing, but if you pay close attention to what they say, if you listen, you will hear and you will be able to depict uh, uh, true worship versus lip service. See, real, real worship, you can't, you can't turn off. Uh-oh, somebody said, uh-oh. See, real worship, the preacher would say, sit down, and your hands are still up. Lip service, the preacher says, sit down, and you the first one. Oh, I'm tired. I've been standing all throughout this service, and you sit right then. You just missed out on the moment to experience true worship. I, I tell people all the time, at this church, I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge your thinking. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge your worship style. I'm going to challenge the way you praise. Because if, if you've been doing the same thing for a thousand years and there hasn't been any change and you think you're going to continue to grow in that, I, I, I got news for you, baby. You're not going to grow in that. You're going to have to do something different if you really want to experience the glory of God. Because the glory of God means, Lord, show me something new that I've never experienced. Do y'all know there's all types of things that, that are in heaven that God wants to expose us to? But the only way that we can be exposed to him is if we learn how to get in his word and allow his word to transform us. That's why it says, be not conformed, but be ye what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind so you can know what's right from wrong. So you can know what's holy and unholy. So you can know what's anointed and not anointed. So that you can know what is the spirit of God and what ain't the spirit of God. You got to learn how to know God for yourself. In other words,
words there. Uh, uh, let's look at verse 3. And we're we going to be done right here. We're going to finish this next week. But Zerubbabel and Yeshua uh, and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, We have nothing to, to do with us to build a house unto our God, but we ourselves together will build unto the Lord God of Israel, as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, hath commanded us. In other words, they were unified in their response. In other words, they said, no, nah, I don't need your help, bro. I'm good. You lying still. I don't need your help. Uh, man, I want to come to your church so bad. Uh, uh, not if you're coming to raise hell. Not if you were sleeping around with everybody else at the other church. Don't, don't, don't. don't. Hallelujah. Am I, am I being too real? You got to be careful when people want to jump on your bandwagon. But you also got to be careful of the sound that you're making that's attracting. What are you attracting? Some of us are stuck in seasons because we keep pushing out a sound that's attracting flies. We was at a men's meeting. And <laughs> I'm, I'm done. We was at men's meeting. Yeah, come on, musicians. We was at men's meeting, and we were talking about how men, we, we, we hold stuff in. And the reason why we hold stuff in is because we don't want anybody to really to know our weaknesses. Because the moment that we expose our weakness, there is somebody out there that's paying attention that will use that weakness against us. That's why it's crucial that men run to other men and not men to, I, I need my brother. Can I talk to the men real quick? You, you need your brother. But you need somebody that's going to hold you accountable. You need somebody that's going to tell you the truth about yourself. You need somebody that's going to say, hey, man, let's, hey, let's, hey, instead of going to the strip club tonight, let's go ahead and pray. And, 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 and instead of getting high tonight, let's get high on Jesus. Let's, 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 let's open up our Bible and, let's, and let's, let's, let's let iron sharpen iron because men need other men. Men don't need boys. Boys need men. Don't get so caught up in the hype that you miss out on an opportunity for God to blow your mind. Good church is good. They was having good church. But after they was having good church, the enemy showed up. But you got to watch this. They made a decision that in that moment, I ain't, I ain't fooling with you. You can be in my DMs all you want to. I don't care. Matter of fact, I don't even have to block you because I have the strength to just ignore you. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo! See, that's, and see, can I, can I, cause mind you, we can get tricked in that, that the fact that you block them think that you actually gave, that gave you power. No, baby, that didn't give you power. That just gave you another tool. But when you can literally have somebody unblocked and they text you and there's no effect, that means you now are walking in authority and a power and you don't need an app to tell you, yes, you can talk to them. No, you can't. No, the spirit of God that lives on the inside of you will tell you, no, I ain't going back to that stuff no more. But because we get so caught up in the hype, that person would text us at the wrong time. And we feeling good. Matter of fact, we, we, go, we go to the club. Music good. He show up. Hey, girl, I ain't seen you in a long time. How you been? Music, and mind you, you probably got another spirit operating right there in that moment because you didn't have a couple of drinks. Hallelujah. I wish a senior saint would say, baby, look, I've been there. I know what that felt like. Let's, let's help some of these young folks and say, look, let me tell you, baby. Avoid that pitfall. But we get so caught up in the hype of it. 
And because we get so caught up in the hype of it, we neglect to continue to work on our temple. They was having church. They laid the foundation. They, they laid the foundation, and they went back to taking care of their house. And then the prophet shows up. The word of God shows up and says, hey, man, how long are you going to allow God's temple to just lie in ruins, man? You live in that, in that, in that nice six-bedroom on, on whatever street. You got a four-car garage, man, and the garage of the church is broken. Or better yet, you got this big, beautiful house, but you have to cry yourself to sleep at night. Your house is divided. Looks good, but on the inside, it's divided. Looks holy and sanctified, but on the inside, it's in ruins. What are you attracting? Don't get caught up in the hype. Because the height will fool you. <laughs> Next week, we're going to figure out how to get off the height and really deal with our priorities. Really deal with, don't get so caught up in all that. But next week, we're going to deal with really understanding the promises of God. Because the word for this house is still, the promises of God are still yes and amen. The doors of the church are open. That word helps somebody. Y'all got to pray for your pastor because it took everything in me not to holler this one. I had to literally tell myself in the office, just, just, just chill, boy, chill. Chill, just talk to the people. You don't got to hoop and holler all the time. Just talk to them. Because you have a church that's just hungry for the word. And I do believe that each and everybody in here, everybody that comes to those doors, that when we say the name of Jesus, something is going to happen. Because I believe that the glory of the Lord lives in this place. I believe that there were some senior saints that literally prayed when they were walking up to this building to move into this building, laying the foundation. God has blessed us to be 158 years old. As a matter of fact, I need all my young people to look at a senior saint and say, hey, find, find somebody. Say, hey. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. And and now that you done told them, say, say, I need you. But also, can I talk to my senior saints real quick? I need all my senior saints to look at my young people and say, hey. And tell them, I need you too. We got to do this together. We got to do this together. If you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you've never made, that means you've never made this declaration. You've never made this confession. And you never said, I want to make Jesus my choice. If you want to be saved today, the Bible says you call on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. If you want to be saved, today's a good day. Don't get caught up in the hype. Get caught up in being saved. Get caught up in salvation. All eyes closed. If that's you. If that's you. And you want to be saved today. I just want you to throw your hand in the air. There's one. 
There's two. Is there another? Today's a good day to be saved. Salvation. There, there's three. Today's a good day to be saved. God wants your heart. Is that four? That's four. Hallelujah. I'll wait for five because five is the number of grace. Matter of fact, ask your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you saved? And if they didn't answer, say, do you need me to go up there with you, man? We can do this together because I've been there. I made this choice, and I know it's hard. If, if that's you and your hand went up and wanted to be saved, I need you to come stand right here at this altar. Meet me right here. If that's you, and I need this church to erupt in a praise. Come on. Hallelujah. One, two, three, four, five. Hallelujah. So I will make for you. And I will at this church. At this church, I want you to be saved. I want you to experience God like you've never experienced him before. I want you to grow in him like never before. I promise you, I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge your relationship. I'm going to challenge your thinking. I'm going to challenge you to worship. I'm going to challenge you to open up your mouth. I'm going to challenge you to participate in prayer. I'm going to challenge you to show up for Bible study. I'm going to challenge you to be. Is this another one? Church, can we celebrate? This is what it's all about. to the church every Sunday. All hands at this altar. Lift your hands, lift your hands, lift your hands, lift your hands, lift your hands. And I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Matter of fact, my prayer warriors, can y'all surround them to stand behind them? I want to guard this. Those at this altar, I want you to, to, and I want you to say it with conviction. Say, Lord, here I am. Save me. Raise me. Forgive me. Set me free from myself. Lord, forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for my shortfalls. Forgive me for my mistakes. Lord, say it like you mean it. Say, Lord, I surrender my all. Lord, fill me with the power, the glory. Fill me with your spirit in Jesus' name. I thank you for saving me. 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 And now, God, I put my hand in your hand. Lead me. Guide me. Direct me. Teach me. Use me. But also protect me. In Jesus' name, I thank God for salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. You're saved. It's that simple. It's that simple. It's that simple. Now, Pastor P, I'm going to need your help on this one. If you can, I want y'all to follow Pastor P in the back. And she's going to take y'all to the back. They are having children's church back there. Uh, 
but she's going to take you out to the back. And there is a QR code um, on that table um, that says, Welcome to New Zion. Make sure they scan it, and we're going to grab all their information. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate New Zion. Come on. Next petition, and if you just need prayer, I just need you to stand right where you are. If you need prayer, I just need you to stand right where you are. I'm not going to ask you to come to the altar. hands lifted, our hands lifted. I want you to get on your mind what you need God to do. God will do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask of faith. But it's all connected to the posture of your heart. It's all connected to the posture of your heart. Get it on your mind. I don't want to rush this moment because I want you to leave it here at this altar. And before I pray, I need you to pray. Before we, the pastors, intercede and the prayer warriors intercede on your behalf, I need you to participate in your breakthrough. I need you to participate in your deliverance. I need you to participate because God wants to hear your sound. So when I count to three, I need everybody that has a voice just to open up your mouth and begin to talk to God. Don't hide behind the music. Don't hide behind your neighbor. This is just you and God. One, two, three. Open your mouth right there. Come on. Talk to him. God, we're praying for healing right now. Hear the voices of your children. See the need of your children. See the desires of your children, God. And we're praying, Lord God, right now for breakthroughs. We're praying for circumstances to be changed, God. Hear our thoughts, Lord. Hear our hearts, Lord. We're, we're crying out to you right now, God. Asking you for a change. We're crying out to you right now, Lord God. Asking for deliverance. Deliverance from depression. Deliverance from sadness. Deliverance from disappointment. Deliverance from sickness. Delivering from cancer. Deliverance from heart disease. Deliverance from high blood pressure. Deliverance from strokes and heart attacks. Deliverance from seizures. Deliverance from sickle cell. Deliverance from heartache. Deliverance from relationship issues. Deliverance from dysfunctional families. Deliverance from incarceration. Deliverance from abuse. Deliverance from addiction. Deliverance 
from sadness. God, we're praying that you will bring families back together. We're praying for a healing over the marriages, God. That divorce doesn't have to be the final answer, God. We're praying, Lord, for people that have lost loved ones, Lord. Heal, God. Heal the hurt hearts. Make whole again, God. Financial struggles, Lord God. Deliverance from the financial struggles, God. Bless with promotions, God. Bless with job opportunities, God. Deliverance from academic challenges and struggles, God. Help with the grades, Lord God. Help with the challenges in the classroom, God. The difficulty between relationship with the professors, Lord God. We're praying for your healing power, God. You said, if ye abide in me and my word abide in you, you can ask what you will and it shall be done. God, please move right now. Your word is in us. We're in you, God. And we're trusting you at your word because you're a God that never fails, a God that has never told a lie. You are a God that we can stand on your word and know that we have victory in you, God. And right now, God, we're claiming the victory in you. Victory, Lord God. Let no weapon formed against anyone in here prosper, Lord God. We are overcomers, Lord God, by our testimonies in the blood of the Lamb. We are victorious, Lord God. We are blessed going out and coming in, God. This is your word. These are your scriptures, God. And we're trusting you, Lord God, that you're going to come through, God. We're praying for the breakthroughs right now, God. You see your children with their hands in the air, with their hearts on you, with their minds on you. God, we're claiming the breakthrough right now in the name of Jesus. We're thanking you in advance, God, for the breakthrough, God. Lord, we're praying for some of us need a right now breakthrough, Lord God. We don't have the next several years to wait, God. Some of us need something right now, God. So we're praying that you will bless right now, God. We know you have all power in your hands. And all blessings don't have to take forever, God. So we're praying for an immediate breakthrough, Lord God. We're speaking those words into the atmosphere. We're speaking those seeds into the atmosphere right now. That this time is changing. That the struggle is no more. That the healing has taken place. That the deliverance is already done, Lord God. We're believing it right now, God, that you've already done it. Now is the time for you to participate in your breakthrough. All God is asking now, he said, I've heard your prayers, but now I just need you to answer my answer to your prayers with a thank you and a hand clap knowing that I've already done it for you. Like he told the woman, by your faith, your faith has made you whole. So right now, the prayer that you've prayed and the faith that you exercise with it has made you whole. Your circumstances have changed. God has made you whole. That struggle is no more. God has made you whole. And stand on that. In Jesus' name, we pray. Thank God. It's done. Amen. Come on, if you believe it's done, come on, give God a clap, hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to go home. You may take your seats real quick, real quick. We're getting ready to go home. I was trying to wait for my babies to get in here. Amen. They must be having good children's church. Amen. I want to go back there and have church with the chilling. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> um, but real quick, um, if you don't have a church home and you want a church home, I'm going to tell you, I would love to be your pastor. Real talk. Real talk, if you really want a pastor that's going to get in your business, then hallelujah, you, you come.
come to the right church. Amen. Because I promise uh, I'm going to intercede for you. I promise me and my wife, we're going to pray for you. I promise you, we're going to have your back. I promise you. Um, and we're going to cover you in prayer in such a way to where you're going to feel literally chains daily just coming off of you. I believe that this church has one of the strongest ministerial staff that I've ever had the opportunity to work with. And every one of these pastors of this church, they believe in the power of prayer. And I'm so, so grateful. Come on, let's celebrate them. Let's celebrate them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I'm not going to stay here long. Um, but if you want to unite with this church, can just throw your hand in the air and just because I want to make sure that I connect. You want to join this church? You want to join this church? Hallelujah. One, three, one, two, three. We got four in. Amen. I got three. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, one for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost. Um, those three that, that said they wanted to join, can you meet me up here at this altar? I want to just love on you. Me and my wife want to love on you. Yes, come on, New Zion. Come, you, you join it? Come, come, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, and so, what's your first name? Got two Lawrence at this church. Hey, man, hallelujah. Welcome, Lauren. We are so glad to have you. What's your name? Kaylin. Kaylin. Welcome, Kaylin. We are so glad to have you. And I've been waiting on you because I didn't see you on it how many times. What's your, Tiffany, bless you. Tiffany, it, it's due sign. Can we love on our newest members? <laughs> hallelujah. Come on, let's love on them like we really love them. They want to join our family. Hallelujah. And so real quick, real quick, real quick, um, I don't know if you got your purse, but grab it because everybody ain't saved. Amen. Um, um, hallelujah. I'm going to ask you to, if you can follow uh, Pastor P in the back. Uh, Sister Collins is back there. There's a QR code. We just want to grab some information from you so that we can stay connected. Amen. Come on, New Zion. Let's celebrate. <laughs> hallelujah. Sister White. It's so good to see y'all. It, it, can, can we celebrate Sister White? Hallelujah. And her lovely family. Y'all stand so they can. We ain't seen y'all in a, in a good minute. Hallelujah. It's so good to see y'all back in the house. I had the opportunity to talk to her on the phone, and she said, I'm coming back home. She said, I've been looking for other churches because that drive, she lives in New Braunfels. And I said, well, we're going to make sure that you can get to church. She said, I can't find a church like this church. Amen. And so I'm so grateful to welcome you back home. God bless you. God bless you. Can we celebrate Deacon Hale in the back? He's in the house with us today. God bless you, man. Bless you. It's good to see you. Hallelujah. We're standing, we're standing, we're standing. I want to uh, remind us, Bible study is what day? At what times? We got Bible study at 12, and we got Bible study at 7, amen. And so, we got noonday at 12, and we got Bible study at 7. Somebody say we got noonday at 12, and Bible study at 7. All right. Get involved with your church. Get involved. Here we go. The Jesus. Come on, chillin'. The Jesus in you. The Jesus. Jesus in me. Loves the Jesus. So we Come on, y'all come up here. So easy.
dismiss us in prayer. Our hearts are made easy by looking forward to the Lord. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to be once again in your house. My heart is heavy laden, but it, all the symptoms has been lifted because we've had a joyful noise and the, and the word is great. Father, we just ask for you, for your thankful. We are thankful just to be here. And we thank you, Father, for once again having me to come into the house. We thank you, Father, for what you're doing at home in my house where my daughter is struggling for her life. But we thank you, Father, because we know you can do miracles. We know you can do anything but fail. And Father God, we're just so grateful for ourselves. We just ask, we hope that everyone had a, a beautiful time. I know I certainly did, but I'm prejudiced because this is my home. <laughs> However, but Father God, we just so, we're so grateful. And, and we thank you for the message from Pastor. We thank you for the prayer warriors that have come up and prayed. And we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Father. You are dismissed. We'll see you next Sunday. We'll see you. Actually, we're going to see you on Wednesday. Amen. God bless you. I love you. I love you with the love of God. God bless you. I love you.